become equation 5. Now, the next step that I want to do will be the power of W that you see in equation 5 involved with this product. And I may want to multiply that product out. And let's see what happens. So when you multiply, you consider the power of W in equation 5. So let's look at the next slide. You see? This product right here represents the power of W. So what we can do is we take the first product, the first term, you multiply with 2K1. By doing that, this is what you got. And then similarly, we take the first parenthesis, you multiply with the second term. So 2N1 plus N0 times K0. This is what you got. So the left-hand side can be expressed equivalently as the right-hand side. Then after that, we want to do a little bit more expansion. Like for example, we can take 2N1 times 2K1. That will become 4N1K1. And we can also take N0 times 2K1. That will become 2N0K1. And after that, we don't change anything. OK, then we do a little bit more manipulation. This term right here, which is W raised to the power 4N1K1, can be expressed the same thing like W raised to the power 4, and then the whole thing raised to the power N1K1. They are the same thing. Why do we want to do that? Well, the reason we want to do that is because we will show you on the next slide the one that you have inside the parenthesis, which is W raised to the power 4. We will prove to you that that guy turned out to be having a very simple value, as you can see on the next slide. So you, here you go. You see how do you will compute W raised to the power 4? Well, if you remember, the definition of W is given as E raised to the power minus I, small i, times 2 pi divided by capital N. Therefore, when you take W raised to the power 4, the right-hand side, you also have to raise to the power 4. Okay? But that 4, keep in mind that this capital N represents the number of data points. So in this example, the, cap the number of data point is equal to 4. Okay? So what it means basically is this expression is the same thing as E raised to the power minus I times 2 pi. Same thing. And E raised to the power minus I 2 pi, if you make use of the so-called Euler identity, Euler identity, Euler identity, we make use of this, this equation very often, Euler identity, then we can say that E raised to the power minus I 2 pi is the same thing as cosine 2 pi minus I psi of 2 pi. And we all know psi of 2 pi is equal to 0, cosine of 2 pi is equal to 1. So what does that mean? It means W raised to the power 4, remember inside this square bracket, turn out to be equal to 1. Very convenient. That equal to 1. So if that is the case, as you can see from the previous slide, then you can see the red term W raised to the power 4 now drop out just to be equal to 1. So basically, what it means is 1 raised to any power, like N1K1, is still remain 1. So you don't have to worry about this term at all, because that term basically equal to 1. So you don't have to worry about that. So now, with those uh, 
information in there, then the equation 5 that you have earlier now can be simplified. It can be simplified. Now it becomes as shown in equation 7. Okay? And the, the reason you can see that is equation 7 is basically it's just like you come from equation 5. You look at equation 5, what do you have? You have two summation. Okay? You have two summation on k0 and k1. And then you have the function f and then multiply with w raised to some power. That is equation 5. That equation 5 now will be simplified. Now you can see equation uh, C tilde involved with two summation right here for k0, k1 of the function f and multiply that with a function w raised to a certain power and that that term w raised to power will be simplified because of w raised to power 4 is equal to 1. So that's why now you got equation 7. Okay. After you get equation 7, what is the next step that you can do? You can go back to equation 7. It will become very clear. What we want to do next is we want to compute the so-called inner product. What is the inner product? The inner product we did, this is like an inner product. Inner product. Inner product computation. Remember we use this term, this terminology, inner product, when we talk about fast Fourier transform derivation in the informal way. At that time, we define, let's say, the intermediate vector F1 is the same thing as a summation on K1 of f time w raised to the power 2n0 k1 w raised to the power 2n0 k1 so let's see yeah so basically what we said here is if you look back at equation 7 the product from here to there we call that is the inner product and that inner product we call it the new name is vector f1 Okay, that is F1. That's the inner product. That is the inner product. Okay. So, uh, look at equation uh, 7 again. The product of summation K1 of F times W raised to the power 2 and 0 K1, we call it the vector F1. Okay? And then, after that, Assuming you already finished the calculation of the inner product to get after vector F1, then what we have left will be you take the other W right here, multiply with the vector F1, and together you call that these the other outer product, vector F2, just like the, the, the old way that I derived a formula for you. So now let's worry about the inner product to find out the vector F1 first. So you can see this is the definition of the inner product for calculation of vector F1 as shown in you in equation 8. Now, you can see very easily here the summation in equation 8, right? The summation of K1 going from 0 to 1. And the reason is because I told you earlier every number N0, K0 or K0, K1 they all binary number, and that's why they can only go from K1 only go from 0 to 1. So let's see what happened. When K1 is equal to 0, let's see what happened. Well, when K1 equal to 0, this is K1 equal to 0. You see that? And so K1 is equal to 0. And also, K1 here is equal to 0. And because K1 equal to 0, 
it doesn't matter you multiply with 2 and 0 or what the power st for w is still 0 so this is a term corresponding to equation 8 with k1 equal to 0 and then after that when you let k1 equal to 1 okay when you let k1 equal to 1 that k1 become equal to 1 in here when you let k1 equal to 1 that power become 2 and 0 so basically as you can see equation 9 is the same thing as equation 8 when you expand equation 8, that's what you get, equation 9. Now, after you get equation 9, the next step we can say is we say like this. Well, what happened if you let k0 equal to 0, and then you let k0 is equal to 1, something like that. So let's see what happened. Okay, you see, if you look back in equation 9, in equation 9, what you have is on the left-hand side, F1 of N0, comma K0. So here, that equation 9 actually contains four equations, actually. Why? Because the value N0 could be equal to 0, K0 could be equal to 0, or N0 could be equal to 0 and K0 equal to 1 or N0 could be equal to 1 K0 equal to 0 or N0 could be equal to 1 and K0 also equal to 1 so you can see equation 9 actually will give you four equation corresponding to the value of N0 K0 is 0 0 or the value N0 K0 is 0 1 or the value n0 k0 is 1 0 or the value n0 k0 is 1 1 so equation 9 will give you four equation that is right here is shown in equation 10 you see 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 so the value of n0 and k0 can be different all right so that equation 9 now become 4 equation as indicated in equation 10. Then you say equation 10 would have a 4 equation can be represented in the matrix notation. As you can see, the left hand side involved with the intermediate vector F1 that is again shown in this vector right here in equation 11. And also, the right-hand side of equation 10 can be expressed as the product of a 4x4 four four matrix times a 4x1 vector. As a matter of fact, you can, if you don't believe me, you can verify it. Like, for example, take a look at the first equation. That first equation is right here for f1 0 comma 0 if you take the first row of the coefficient matrix and you multiply with the vector f you will get back the same equation 1 that we talked earlier in equation 10 so basically equation 10 is the same thing as equation 11 and in case you forgot this equation 11 is exactly the same equation that we got earlier when we developed the so-called informal fast Fourier transform. This represents the so-called inner product operation. Okay? In fact, here it is. Equation 11 that we just obtained now play exactly the same role like equation 10 earlier when we talk about the informal development of the fast Fourier transform. So, so far, let's see what did we have. We already compute the inner product to obtain the vector F1. So what is the next thing we can do? 
I hope you still remember. That